Well, today is part number three of our Better is Possible series. Everybody say, Better is Possible. How many of you all have enjoyed this series so far? Let me see by a show of hands. Praise God. If you've missed any part of it, all of the playback will be on the Alive Church app or the Alive Church YouTube page. Mm -hmm. But this is what we know, that there is no marriage that cannot get better. All right? No matter what, where you are currently in your relationship, no matter what you've been through, better is possible. But after 25 years of marriage, ups and downs and everything mm -hmm. that we've been through, um, we've learned to get the results that most people ha don't have. You have to do the things that most people won't do. And this is what we've concluded. A great marriage takes a great investment. Mm -hmm. And your marriage can get better if you are willing to put in the work. Unfortunately, so many people, they want something for nothing. And that's just not the way that it works. And so today is part number three, and we're entitling it, How to Take Care of Your Spouse. How mm. to Take Care of Your Spouse. And we got one major goal. We'll bring it up on the screen. It's a long sentence. I made it up myself. It's to help you take care of your spouse in a way. Come on. <clears throat> um, well, that's the title. Go to the next one. To help, to help you take care of your spouse in a way that blows their mind and gives an example to the world of how great a marriage God's way can be. That's good. Y'all like that goal? I made that up myself. I didn't even see that slide. I yeah, didn't know you yeah, were that, doing that. that. That's, that's hilarious. That's crazy. But we want your marriage, <laughs> we want you to take care of your spouse in a way that blows their mind. We're going to give you some keys today to blow your spouse's Woo. mind so you can be, a, there's too many bad examples of what marriage looks like. We want you to be a good example yeah. to the world. And so I've invited the take care of your man um, specialist today. Her name is Tabitha Clater. She is <laughs> five foot six, hailing from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. The project's <laughs> called Bearwood. She's now in the house today. Oh. Would you give it up for Tabitha Clater oh, as she comes? Oh my goodness. Because she is a, I, I consider her uh, a take care of your man specialist. Wow. I really do. She, she excels in this area. Wow. So ladies, you might want to learn a few things here. All right. You might want to pull out a, little, a few note takers here. Because, I feel pressure now. No, don't feel pressure. You're not perfect, but you're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I, that's true. That's true. So why is this important to you though? Mm -hmm. This area um, of taking care of your husband. It's so important because I'm a servant at heart. And I think we all are. We've all been called to serve. And even Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. And I think a lot of us, when we get married and we stand at the altar and <laughs> And, you know, it's like, I'll speak for myself, I didn't really get married to make my husband happy. I didn't get married because he wanted to get married. I got married because I loved him and he was so amazing and I wanted to live my life happily ever after and right. I wanted to have, you know, I wanted my last name to be Clater and it was like a bunch of eyes. It was all about me when I got married. And yes, you should, you know, that should be this, the case, but we can't forget that marriage is a service. Marriage isn't about us. We get married, yes, because we love them and we want to be with them for the rest of our lives, but then there's the I do, which says I will serve you for the rest of my life. And I think that we forget that and it turns out to be like, well, he doesn't do this for me and he doesn't do that for me and I don't like the way that he does that, but that's never been what marriage is. It's about what you do for the other person. She preached it and she just started preaching already. <laughs> Has this been easy for you? Um, I, I would say, no, it hasn't been easy, but it is a pleasure. Uh -huh. um, service is always a sacrifice. And so it's always a sacrifice. Like anytime I do something for you, uh -huh. it's taking this space that I could be doing something for myself right now, right? Yeah. And so there is a sacrifice in it. You know, there's sacrifices of, okay, I'm gonna stay home and take care of the kids for this moment of time. Okay, I'm going to stay home and you know do this because you really need you you really need my help at this time. And so there's sacrifice in it, but the sacrifice is never greater than the reward. And yeah, the make, reward is seeing a smile on your face. Make no mistake about it. This is not a principle just towards you know. I know we're going yeah. this way with it to husbands, but I have to serve her as well. It's husband serving the wife, and I'm gonna make a a, a point later on that my responsibility to serve you is actually greater than your responsibility to serve mm. me. But I think the point that we're trying to make from the beginning is that your marriage is really based upon you serving one another. Absolutely. It's not just what you can get from your spouse or what you need them to do. It's what mm -hmm. can you do from them. Mm -hmm. And in the crossroads of selflessness, all great relationships are born. And in the crossroads of selfishness, great relationships are destroyed. Right. Um, very quickly, let's break it up for husbands. What, uh -huh. Why would you think that this is important for a husband to take care of his wife? Mm. I think, you know, but we said before that marriage is a holy institution. Marriage is a covenant between God, woman, and man. Uh -huh. And But marriage is also 
also a service. And if you don't know this, um, I think that there's a lot of wives who can feel, you know, be neglected okay. because a husband doesn't know he's looking at what she does for me, but he has to do things for her. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, Does that make sense? What about for a wife? Why do you think this is so important for a wife Um, taking care of her husband? Likewise, um, it's the service thing. I think wives taking care of husbands, you know, there are a lot of people, and I'll speak for myself, who are raised in homes without fathers, without men, or with men who didn't really act like men. Uh And so we don't know how to treat a husband. We don't know how to, you know, communicate with that man because he's different than what we are. And I think this will help. And I think that sometimes because there's differences between a man and a woman, Mm -hmm. We can actually tear them down for their differences, but that's how God made us. Right. And instead of tearing them down, we actually can celebrate that and embrace it. Right. Because when we come together, the whole team gets better. Today's going to be good. And so, Tabitha, I feel like you're great at this. You're not perfect, but you're great at this. Mm. But I, I know you have a few principles that you can just share with our yeah. audience and with our church home here. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when, when it comes to you, t- let's, because I want to do ladies first, mm-hmm. and then we're going to do fellas next. So can you just share with us a few principles of how you would advise other people or no, tell us what you've done before as uh-huh. well to take care of your husband. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. I'm just going to speak from my experience. Yeah, We've been it. married for almost 25 years now. Uh-huh. Our marriage went from horrible to wonderful. Uh-huh. And so these are some things that really work in our relationship again and again and again. So the first one here is honoring him in the home. I learned how to honor my husband in a home. Talk about it. And I was that one, like, you know, my dad died early in age. Um, the, uh, the men that were in my life, unfortunately, they weren't good examples. And so I didn't know, you know, what a good man was like. I didn't know what it was like to be a wife. (laughs) I didn't know anything about this husband-wife relationship. And so I had to learn from the word, like what it means to be a wife. And what I found out is that a man as a husband needs honor. It's something that he needs. It's something that God built into him, honor and respect. And so the Bible says this in Romans 12 too. It says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, give preference to one another. And so I had to figure out as a wife, how do I honor this man? And how do I learn to give preference to him over myself? And so uh, some of the things that I did was number one, I wanted to make our home a place that he felt well. Welcomed. And what I found is that sometimes I'll speak for myself again as a wife, I come in the home and I, I set everything, I make the rules, I decorate everything, everything's my way, take your shoes off when you come in the door, I want to put the dishes in the cupboard like this. And then what it did in our marriage is it made him feel like, oh my gosh, when he comes in, what do I do with my shoes? Where do I put my suitcase? What do I do with my, you know, my hat? You know, and he felt like he was walking on eggshells and like unwanted in his own home. And I didn't want it to be like that. And so what I started to do was now I'm going to communicate with you, babe. Hey, um, during family meetings, which we've talked about family meetings during this series as well, we would have a family meeting and I say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about making the rule, take your shoes off when you come in the house for these reasons. What do you think about that? So do you think it's okay? Okay, great. Can you, now, now I need you to help me to do this because the kids aren't going to do it if you don't do it and all of that stuff. And now what did I do? He's not, he feels like still the king of his castle when he comes home. He's not breaking my rules, but he is abiding by his own rules that we set in place. So there's wisdom of how to honor, you know, the husband and just little things that we get in fights over who does the dishes. We get in fights over, you know, why is this on the table? Who didn't put this away? And we can, we can, you know, finalize those things in giving honor and just kind of setting things like that. So anyway, here's me. I love to honor. I'm really big on honor. I'm like, yes, ma'am. No, sir. I'm opening doors for strangers in public. Like, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so when it comes to my own house and in my own family, I definitely want to honor my man. And, you know, we talk about being queens, you know, as late, like, you know, go, you know, go ahead and do that queen. Like, so if I'm a queen, my man is a king. He is the king of his castle. And so I like to set things up according to your preferences and according to what you like. So it's like in our house, I always, you know, have made like a a man cave for you or, you know, a special place, whether at times um, it was like this corner of the house, this is your recliner. Or sometimes it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to make a space in the bedroom. Now you have an own, you know, well, you kind of don't have your own room anymore. You're sharing it right now. But now you have a space that it's yours that you can go to. It's my effort to honor him and make him feel like when he walks in the door, I'm home, you know, daddy's home. Okay, the husband, the man of the house is here. I want him to feel like that when he walks in the door. That was a lot and it was really, really good. I mean, mean, that was really, really good. 
Um, what about the woman who is like, well, he ain't, he, ain't, he ain't worth all that, or almost, she's almost offended at building him up mm -hmm. because she's been so programmed to tear him down. Yeah. Can you just speak to that for a That's moment? That's where you have to renew your mind according to the word of God. Because we just talked about Jesus being the servant. Jesus said the servant shall be the greatest. If you want to be great, go down. And so I know like if, if, if anyone, like I consider myself like great, not, uh, you know, like I want to be great. You I want to be all that. I yeah. want to live the dream and have, a, a, you know, a marriage that's great and all of that yeah. stuff. Well, if I'm going to be living the dream, dream, uh -huh. why would I, my husband be a bum? Right. Like, that's not, that's not it. That's like, you know, that doesn't work out. So no, I want to sow words of kindness. I want to, baby, what do you need today? Baby, I'm here for you because that's just how I want us to flow in our relationship. Amen. Um, I would say, I, you know, here's an assumption, but I just feel like there are some women who just don't understand what it's like being a man. Yeah. And men who don't understand what it's like being a woman. Yeah. And that's why these things are so healthy. Absolutely. But a man can be beat up outside of the home, beat up in the workplace, beat up in society, mm -hmm. beat up, just beat up. So when he comes home, he doesn't want to be beat up. Yeah. When he comes home, he needs to be built up. Yeah. And if he's built up, he can handle being beat up. Absolutely. If he, yeah. Did y'all get that? If you're built up, he can handle being beat up. But if he's getting beat up out there and beat up at home, he doesn't even have a chance. And so there is a responsibility of leader, whether you are CEO of a company, whether you're the leader of your home, um, you got to know as a second chair leader that that leader's taking shots yes. so that you don't have to take them. Yes. And if a wife can understand that her husband is a priest in the home, he has spiritual responsibility. It doesn't mean that he's better than you. It just means that he's the responsible one to Absolutely. lead the team to the championship. Absolutely. And if you can support your head coach, the whole team can win. Mm -hmm. Don't tear him down. Build him up. Bless him. Encourage him. You've always done that for me. Absolutely. And I, I couldn't run. What, I couldn't do what I'm doing today if I came home and you were just nagging me and tearing me down and telling me you wish you never married me and you thought that I made a mistake. I couldn't go out here and do all the things that we're doing, mm -hmm. but you never mm -hmm. treat me like that. Amen. And I appreciate that so much. You know, because the Bible says a wise woman builds her house with her hands, but a foolish one tears it down. <laughs> and so I never want to be foolish to, to, to tear down my own house, you know? Yeah, but you know, another thing that I think that especially uh, parents, moms uh, do, and there's a, like a, a joke out there that like, um, you know, I have three kids, but I really have four because you know, my, my husband over here, he's just another kid. And I think like, okay, I get it, I get it. But really like, he is not your child. He is your man. He is your husband. He is not to be I'm treated a like a child. Man. He's a grown man. I'm a grown dog and so, little man. And, 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 and I think we have to fix that because if we don't fix that in our mind, that renewing of the mind, we will begin to treat him like he's a child. And it's like, no, he don't, nobody wants to be treated like that. So that honor has to be there. In fact, I treat my children, you know, to honor daddy when he comes home. When our children were smaller, oh, I, talk knew, about that. Yeah. I knew what yeah. time you were going to come in. <laughs> talk, no, talk, get him practical yeah, things. Yeah, What'd absolutely. You do? Uh -huh. So I knew what time he was coming home. Uh -huh. And so I would prepare the kids daddy's coming get ready daddy's about to come home and maybe they drew a picture that day they're running to get it to daddy or maybe they're just going to greet daddy with a hug and kiss but when he opens the door of his castle he feels honored the babies are coming and giving them kisses but I'm also teaching my kids honor just for their sake to honor their daddy they're knowing that oh when daddy comes home things get better I'm expecting daddy to come home I like it when daddy comes home so they learn that for them self because we need that good father you know children relationship but then also it teaches them it teaches my son he knows what to expect when he comes home it teaches my daughters you know what to expect from your husband and so honor just goes so long and I always want you to feel honored in your house there's a lot to this Fixing the I food, wanna, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, where we can, you're going. Yeah. I know, I know. I did want to say, this is just, a, I'm not going to get into this a lot. And we've talked about this before, <laughs> and we talk about this on our podcast. But, you know, part of the honor thing and serving, one thing that I did, and he has now, is Ken's Night. And, you know, it used to be once a week. Sometimes it was once a month. Now it hasn't happened yet this year, maybe. <laughs> I've been neglected in the daily administration. <laughs> 
want to say that it is a thing. You know, at least it is a thing, and it will pop you up any time. People don't know what Ken's Night is. The church has grown very quickly. Yes. What is Ken's and, Night? And so Ken's Night is, if your man is Mike, it could be Mike's Night, whatever it is. But my, my man is Ken, so it's Ken's Night. And Ken's Night is just a night that I pick, and I'm just going to serve my man. Sometimes it could be me um, pulling out a Manny Petty and just, you know, he's sitting down watching the game with his favorite snack on the side, and I'm just pampering him, giving him a little pedicure. Sometimes it could be I pull out the massage table that I bought for him for Ken's night, and I break out the oil, and I just give him a full body massage, better than any masseuse can give. And, you know, so Ken's night. <laughs> of creative things that I can do, you know, and you know your man, so there's creative things that you can do just to honor him and to serve him. And listen, when you honor and serve him, he's going to make your life better as well. I will. I will. <laughs> but I have other points. Go ahead. I, I have other points. Right, so, you got to go quickly, though, because you, okay, you, okay. you took I'm, that I'm, I'm going to try to go quickly. So Let me look at there. my notes. Okay. Yeah. And so the second point, and it, it's very quick, is that... Um, <laughs> companionship. Mm -hmm. Be a companion to your husband. And you know, the Bible talks about um, God creating man and woman and says that God created Adam and he said it wasn't good that man should be alone. And so he created for him a help meet, a companion. He didn't want dog being a man's best friend, but he created a wife, someone who was equal to him, someone to share life with him. And I think that that's very important and a need that a husband has toward yeah. his wife. One of the needs of a man is companionship. And I just just want to be that companion to him. I think it's biblical and I want to live that out. And I think a lot of times there's nothing wrong with having girlfriends and doing your girls thing. But for me, my man comes first. I want to have husband and wife trips. I want to do those things. And so if he's going to a basketball game, yeah, he has times where he goes out with his guy groups or whatever. But most no, of the time, really. he doesn't really. I mean, but I most of that. the time we go together. Yeah. And so I've made myself a friend to him. Mm -hmm. um, if he likes basketball, I like basketball basketball, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's worked out for us. I think a lot of people get divorced and a lot of people get um, angry at each other because they've stopped being friends. Mm -hmm. And so when we first started dating, you might not have wanted to go to that restaurant, but you did it anyway because you wanted it because your friend did it and you were trying to get to know them. And even when I think about my girlfriends, like in college and things like that, I mean, my friends, my girlfriends talked me into doing things that were probably illegal that I shouldn't have done, like just the wrong things. But why did I do it? Because it was my friend and I just did it because my friend wanted to do it and we became like this, like ride or die, like, you know, we're there for each other. But as husband and wife, we have to remember friendship. Wow. The Bible talks about, you know, just that companionship, yeah. that a man should not be alone. So I wanted to be that for you and um, I grew up watching football. I didn't know anything about basketball, but I sat down and learned basketball. I will turn on Sports Center and find out what's going on and halfway know what I'm talking about just so that I can be a companion to my man. No, no lie, no lie. Last night, <laughs> she just flew in from Oklahoma last night. The Lakers and the Nuggets are playing. Like, this is big time stuff. This is like the first round of the playoffs. She's watching the Cosby Show reruns. I come upstairs like, do you not care about the playoffs? And so, but, but I, I tell you what, she tries her best and that's all that we need. You know, your man likes fishing. I know you can't stand worms, but go fishing. Just sit in the boat, make him a sandwich, and just sit there and talk. Absolutely. Vice versa. Because let me, let me talk to husbands for a moment. Okay, she likes the garden. She likes art. She likes pottery. Why don't you go to a class with her? Why don't you get into her world? That's what it means to be a friend, that I'm actually going to do something that I don't want to do because you want to do it. Mm. We preaching better than y'all saying amen. I hope the East Campus is with us. <laughs> anyway, what's your last point? Uh, okay, here? I got one more point uh -huh. here, and that is, as a wife, how can you take care of your man? Take care of you. Take care of yourself. So, so true. And I know this, you guys know my history. Um, I was depressed. Um, uh, I had all kinds of baggage from my past, from sexual abuse and, and things like that. And I had to get myself together right. um, before I could really 
even serve my husband or be the wife that he deserves to have. Wow. And so I just want to encourage you, you know, sometimes, um, you know, especially in different phases of life, you know, you could be just got married and, you know, just starting your career and you got so many things to do and oh my gosh, you know, and then it could be you, you just had kids and that's a whole other issue. It could be your kids just, you know, you're an empty mess nester, but now you're starting a business and you're doing all of these other things. There's always things just like, you know, right. driving us to run around like chickens with our heads cut off as women you know we don't want to say no we want to be there for everyone we want to do everything but we can pour our lives out for everyone else but forget to take care of ourselves and if we can't take care of ourselves well then we can't be there adequately like we can be for anyone else and so one thing that I've learned over the years you know going through cancer and overcoming cancer and overcoming other sicknesses and challenges and things is that if I get shut down he shut his whole, you know, like he can't do what he's supposed to do. He's at home, you know, doing whatever, trying to take care of me. Or the worst thing is, is it like, if you come home and you're, you know, I'm stressed out because I come home from work stressed out, then you come home. It's just like, it, it just, it's crazy. We can't even be there for one another. And here's one thing that I want to say too. I um, talked to a lot of women and I was having a conversation with a young woman, maybe married about five years, a couple of kids, and she chose to stay at home because she just had a new baby. So she chose to stay at home. She's not working at that point. And um, she was just frustrated. Like her husband's going to work and she's like, he comes home happy. Like everything's okay. And I'm stressed out and rah, and the kids are crying and, and my hair's crazy and I didn't get my nails done in so long and I'm so tired. And I was just like, okay. I mean, cause I get it. I've been there. I get it. It. But then I began to ask her, well, what are you doing for yourself? I was like, you know you're in control of your schedule. Okay, so why are you staying at home right now? Why don't you just go to work? Well, I wanted to stay at home. Okay, well, why don't you, you know, have somebody come help you take care of your kids? Well, I don't want to. I want to take care of my kids by myself. Okay, so well, why didn't you go into your schedule and schedule in a mani-pedi once a week or every other week if you wanted to? Well, I just felt like it. And it just became a bunch of, well, I just, uh, blah, blah. no, the point is, ladies, wives, that you are in control of your own life. If it's going, you know, if your life is crazy, take control of your wow. life. You can do it. Yeah. And what happens is like, we'll be at home. So this particular incident, and I'd been there too, I'm not picking on anyone. She's at home going crazy. And then when her man comes home and he's happy and you used to do that, la, 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 just happy. You want him to be mad like you. You want him to be angry too. You want him to go throwing around the house, you know, throw, opening up the refrigerator and slamming the door. You want him to get in it with you. And that is so ungodly because we are not designed to be stressed out like that. And so lay, Ladies, get it together. You have the ability, you have the power, you have yeah, the Holy Ghost, yeah, you have friends yeah. and mothers and sisters in Christ who are there to help so you. When you get better, your marriage will get better. Wow, wow, wow. And so I have a vision. What would the church look like if we had thousands of women, wives, who were just crazy committed to just take care of their husbands? I mean, like on another level, take care of. I'm talking about a blow his mind kind of take care of. Do you know you could be the hero in the home? You know, many people, they want the harvest without sowing a seed. And they're like, I want this big dream. Okay, start with what you have. Mm. Don't worry about his part to play yet. Because a lot of this has been first geared towards the wives and people are like, well, when you gonna get to the man, we gonna get to the man, but don't worry about the man right now, worry about you. Come and on. I think if we could just play our part, we could be a hero in the home. So. Fellas, it's your turn now. Come on. And um, I want to share a few scriptures with you because you need the Bible in your life. <laughs> Here's a few scriptures that I've lived by as a husband. Proverbs 18, 22. Let's read it together. Ready, read. He who finds a wife finds a good thing Woo! and he obtains what? Favor from the Lord. So here's my perspective as a husband. Husbands, are you here with me? Yes. Is that my wife is my good thing. Yes. No matter what you're going through in your marriage, no matter what it feels like, no matter what you'll ever go through, you have to keep this perspective that she is your good thing. And so a wife is a gift from God to a man, okay? And I don't know about you, when I give a gift to somebody, I want them to take care of my gift, treasure my gift, appreciate my gift. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to take my gift for granted. 
There's too many men that are taking the gift of their wife for granted. Wow. And you should be taking care of your wife, honoring your wife, cherishing your wife, protecting your wife, building up your wife. Come on. Because she is a gift from God to you, and it's actually the sign that you've obtained favor from the Lord. So it's a miracle that you found her. <laughs> I'll give you one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 5. Man, I love you. My name is Ken and I'm your friend. Verse 25. Let's read it together. Ready to read? It says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and he gave himself up for her. Mm. Man of God, if you get this revelation of Ephesians 5.25, you'll go home today and act differently. This means that I'm going to love my wife with the kind of love that I'd be willing to die for her. And I'm making this strong this mm. morning. Somebody say, die for her. Die. That's literally the parallel that the scripture is mentioning when it talks about Jesus' love for the church because he got on a cross for the Big C Church. Mm. He died so that we can live. He takes that love and he applies it to the marriage and he gives a command to the husband and says, husbands, love your wife this mm. way. The same way Jesus died for his bride, you must die for yours. Mm. Not literally, you ain't got to get on the cross, but you have to die every single self. He sets the bar like really, really high. And so when love is the foundation, this dying, give of yourself love is the foundation of your marriage, faithfulness is easy. Commitment mm. is easy. Honor is easy. Submission is easy. Apologies become easy. Intimacy is improved. When you're like, it ain't about me and my Corvette and where I want to go and what I want to do and me staying out going to the pool hall. But it's like, how can I come home and love this woman? And so in that umbrella of love is I'm going to submit to her and I'm going to serve her and I'm going to honor her. And I've used her table to give her a massage. She bought it for me. I flipped it around because yes, it's my did. job to love her even more than she loves mm. me. The charge is not just for the woman. The man actually has the greatest responsibility responsibility. Come on. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying so amen. Good. And so here's a few principles that I've learned over the years to take care of my wife. If you're ready, shout, I'm ready. ready. I want to hear the man shout, I'm ready. ready. Number right. one, you got to pay the affection bill. And the Bible teaches us that our wives are worthy of what the scripture <laughs> says is due benevolence. That's the Bible's way of saying pay the affection bill. 1 Corinthians 7, 3, it says, let the husband render to his wife the affection due her. Man, this thing is due. Just like your light bill is due, <laughs> the affection bill is due. <laughs> and likewise, also the wife to the husband, but I'm focusing on the husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection that's due her. Now, I'm sure I don't need as much affection as Tabitha does. Matter of fact, 25 years, I'm certain that I don't. Um, <laughs> Baby, correct me if I'm wrong. I, yeah, because I give you too much, and I, you know, I could tell when I'm suffocating you. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a responsibility to figure out how much affection you need mm -hmm. and give you the affection that you're due no matter how much I need. Yeah. So you might be a guy that you don't really care about cuddling and caressing and holding hands, but if your wife wants that, you owe her that. Mm. It doesn't matter what you want. You better get used to it because you actually, biblically, you owe her due benevolence. Yeah. And so, you want to speak to that at all? I mean, I, I, I personally, I think, yeah, women are probably need, or I mean, actually, I believe they do need more affection than what men do. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, speaking for myself, yes, I love affection. I want it all day, every day. You can't give me enough affection. That's actually one of her love languages. You yeah. know how you have the four love languages, and one of them is... It is um, touch. touch. So, you know, touch, there's Serving, acts of acts service, of service. Uh, words of affirmation, so what is yours? quality Your time. Your highest one is? My highest one is quality. Well, I don't know if it's touch or quality time. Uh -huh. It's probably like, like I always the go to the both of those. You like to be touched a yeah. lot. And I so, mean, hold my hand, kiss mm -hmm. my cheek, give me hugs, not just a baby hug, but like a long, nice hug, all of that. I like it all. Okay, so practically, this is what I do. All right. I try to say I love you as much as I possibly can to you because I don't think you ever get tired of mm -mm. hearing me say I love you. Mm -mm. Now, there's some homes that that word's not used a lot. It should be used all the time. When I first see you, I always come and give you a hug or mm -hmm. a kiss. First time. When I get up in the morning, I'll come find you, give you a kiss. When I come in the door from work, the first thing I do is I come and I find you and I give you a kiss. Um, I try to hold you for the amount of time that you like more than what I like. Like, she's more like a 60-second hugger. I'm more of like a five-second hugger. 
you know, but I know, so I'm just sitting there, and I know. <laughs> and I'm holding her for the amount of time until I feel like I have a release, like I feel like, okay, you know, just, I'm good, I, I've met my quota here. I appreciate that too, because yeah. some women get mad at that, like, well, if you don't want to hug me, fine, don't hug me. No, I know that you are just uh, like, okay, yeah, stand there, I, let me, this hug is for me. No, Thank but I, I enjoy it too, it's uh -huh. not like I don't enjoy yeah. it, you just enjoy it more. <laughs> When we're out in public, I always try to hold her hand, okay? This, to me, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to walk through the mall like we at a business meeting and we just taking lunch together with my business partner. Like, no, I'm trying to show affection, you know? If you're married, you know, like if I was sitting with my wife in church, I'm not putting pressure on you, but I probably have my hand like moving up her leg and just, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm always trying to touch, you know, walking through the lobby. I'm trying to, you know, I want to be with her, my good thing. Let me move on. Um, I try to keep my touch ratio high and I try to do my very best at noticing new hairstyles and new makeup things she does and new clothes that she has. I don't want her to do all of this new stuff and I just don't even pay her attention while I'm on my explore page looking mm -hmm. at everybody else's beauty. Yeah. It's just something about me getting, Come on. and how do I do with that? Do I do pretty good at that? I think you do well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, so. <laughs> But you did, you know, you asked me that this morning and I was like, mm, I made a face because, you know, uh, you know. But you told me this morning, because you said you liked my hair and my hair wasn't even done yet. And I'm just like, I still uh, liked it. was that, you know, really? I, I still liked it. I told him he didn't notice my hair and he was just like, so he tried to make up for it this morning on the way to church. And he goes, I like your hair, but my hair wasn't even done yet. <laughs> And then when I, and I was just like, babe, it's not done I mean, yet. I meant that from the, the, the bottom of my heart. Like, and I think that's important for you not to assume negative things because I really meant that. It, it, it was a wet style going on. It was like wet. It wasn't done. I know, and I was like, that's done. nice. And I like how your bangs are hanging right now. And man, think about it, guys. Two and a half years ago, she was completely bald from cancer. Look at her hair now. You know what I'm saying? So. In my mind, I'm like, hair, praise God, hair's back. Glory to God. Here's my second principle for taking care of my wife. I want to spend money on her. Mm. <laughs> Here's the principle, because this one's not carnal. Oh, stay with me for a second. Where your treasure is, that's where yeah. your heart is. One of the greatest principles in the Word of God is that where your treasure is, that's where your heart, let me translate this, where your money is, that's what you really love. Yeah. That's what you really care about. And I'm not talking about going debt or overspend, but I'm gonna spend money on her before I spend money on me. Yeah. So if we need a new car, she gets a new car before I get a new car. If we're going to choose a house to buy, we're gonna go with the house that she wants over the house that I want. Ooh. Mm, if there's like something that. that she really wants to do, like she wants to go back to school. She wants to make some kind of improvement. I'm gonna do everything that's in my power to make sure that what she wants come to pass. I have a saying in my house that if you dream it, I'm gonna make it come to pass. Mm. If there's something that I can buy her to make her life easier, I'm gonna invest in it before my golf clubs, before me doing whatever I wanna do, I'm gonna make sure that mama taking care of first. So she's really into health and she buys these <laughs> massage guns. I just got her a massager that was $1,500. I could not believe it. And it sounds like I actually like got a, it on sale for like $1,200. Well, it sounds like a small aircraft landing in the bedroom. It is the most non-romantic thing. I mean, I'm like, oh my God. But if that's what you want, I want to make sure that you get what you it's want. It's really like what I needed because I got some issues going on. But yeah. anyway, but your point is right. Yeah, and here's my point, write this down. I'm gonna put her needs before my own. Amen. That's basically what yes. point number two. Yes. And I would rather take care of you before take care of me, and mm -hmm. I think vice versa. Mm -hmm. Because on the, on the crossroads of selflessness, great relationships are built. Yeah. In the crossroads of self, selfishness, I want what I want, mm. and I wanna spend money here, you know? And yeah. so, I could go through all kinds of different things. I'm just even thinking about people who have separate bank accounts. You know, uh, when you have separate, uh, we don't do a my money, her money, we do our money. And we do have separate accounts so that she can pay for certain things and I can pay for certain things, but she has all of my 
access codes. Yeah. She has whatever's mine is actually hers. I don't have any um, hidden accounts. I don't have any hidden emails. I don't have any hidden phones. I don't have any my accounts, things that she can't touch because the two have become one. And I think it's very important when it comes to the money that, listen, when you get married, it's not my money or your money, it's our money. Now we might have separate accounts just to be able to pay for different things. She has an account that's savings for the kids and for groceries and different things. But at the end of the day, what's mine is hers and what hers is mine. I hope I help somebody yeah. today. And I mean, I will say also that, you know, we, we communicate with one another and I'm never one, like I'm not going to break the budget. Right. I'm not going to go outside of the parameters that we have come together and already set. Yeah. So I'm not coming to you like ridiculously, like, we, you know, we, we're trying to pay off debt, but I need to have these new Gucci shoes. Like, that's just not what I'm going to do. Well, just the bad balance, she's the kind of person that would never shop for for herself at all. And I know there's some wives out here that you just got to go on the craziest shopping spree ever and you just keep on buying and buying and buying. That's just not her. She's the kind of person I'm like, would you please go shopping for yourself? Would you I've please go better. buy something? Yeah. But anyway, I think that that's healthy though. That's mm -hmm. healthy when, so I, yeah. I, I want to go buy you things, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to do the same for me. But here's my third point is that you got to be dependable, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you want to take care of your wife, uh, let me put in parentheses, be counted on. Yeah. Be able to be counted on, meaning that you are a man of God that is trustworthy, meaning that Tabitha knows when I come home, mm -hmm. okay? She knows where I'm going, all right? Um, if, if she calls me on the phone, I try to pick up, and this is really hard, y'all, because she calls it the most strange times, like I'm in the middle of something intense. I could tell by like, your voice yeah, when you pick up if like, you don't want to talk. Because it's like one of those things where you just call me and I'm in the middle of a meeting, but because it's you, I want to pick up and make sure you're okay. And then she's be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'd be like, do you want anything? No, the sun is out. And like, I, no, I do you know? not call you for no reason. Oh my God, you do. It's like, y'all ever seen that commercial where the guy's like fighting off everybody and there's a helicopter and he's fighting his mom calls. He's like, mom, what do you need right now? That's Tabitha. I'd be like, oh my God. That is not you, and true. And then you just start That's talking. That's like a little bit true. You just start true. talking. You don't even say, hey, is, is it, um, you got a minute? You don't say that. You just start talking. Hey, the birds are twerping day. And I was at Target and man, I'm they had a sale going on. I'm happy to hear your voice. Oh I'm just God. like, hey, babe. But the point is this, is that if she calls, I try to pick up. Everybody else goes to voicemail, but if she calls, I try to pick well, up. Thank you. I don't have any hidden phones. I don't have any hidden accounts. What mine is hers. And, she, and I'm accountable to her. And she's not my mom but she is my wife. Mm. And I think that husbands should be accountable to their wives. Yeah. Can you speak to that at all? Anything, Absolutely. Anything I think out? that accountability uh, gives me security. Okay. It gives me like safety. I am never wondering where you are, never. who you're with. I'm never like, I never feel the need to be jealous. Like if you're with another woman, talking to another woman, texting, like I don't have any of that. And I think it's because of that, what you just said, the accountability. You don't, you don't leave me out here guessing. I think there's too much infidelity in mm -hmm. marriages nowadays, there's too much adultery and there's too mm -hmm. many cheaters. And I don't think that you just fall into bed with somebody. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of parameters that you don't have in place that led you to that place. Mm -hmm. I believe that you are allowing a person to slide into your DMs too much. I believe that you're allowing a person to touch you emotionally when you shouldn't. Mm. I believe that there's all kinds of mistakes that you've gotten to before you made the big mistake. Yeah. And I think if you back way up and you become a dependable person that can be trusted, that's trustworthy, that's accountable, that you go to counseling, you'll never fall into an affair mm -hmm. because that's way down the, load, mm -hmm. down the road. There's something that's happening like way before, yeah. typically. Yeah. You know. Now, that's not every case I know. But um, I'm going to give you the bonus one for the men today. Are you ready? Yeah. The bonus one is that you got to be the spiritual leader of your home. So good. If you want to take care of your... Now, please, baby, help me with this one. Uh -huh. But there is a lot of men who go to work and they are spiritual. They are financial providers, but they're not spiritual providers. And I believe that the greatest provision that a husband can have for his wife is mm -hmm. being a spiritual covering for the mm -hmm. home. And I believe that the financial provision will come behind the spiritual. I just feel like there's a lot of men today that they on their grind. I mean, they out there grind and they go to work, they putting it in and they like, well, I take care of everything. I pay for everything. But do you know how to pray? Yeah. Do you speak in other tongues? Do, are you a man of character? Do you understand yes. the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Are, are, do you exhibit the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter five? Can you tell me if I'm wrong? I just feel like you would rather for me be a man that provides spiritually 
even more than a man who provides financially. Absolutely. I mean, they're I, both important. I yeah, want you to be a- They are. Yeah, yeah. you want to do both, but- They're important, but if you were to like weigh them out and compare them, uh-huh. I think that spiritual leadership is definitely, you know, that that's what I need. And especially as a woman, I think sometimes- uh, too often the woman is the spiritual leader of the home. The woman's the one going to church and serving and praying for her family, breaking out the anointing oil. When something goes down, it's the woman. And that's a weight that's too heavy for the woman to carry. By herself. By herself. Yeah. But the man, uh-huh. you know, has been designed to help carry that weight and right. there's a weight that he can carry yeah. on his own. Um, but I think that's more important. I know for, I'll speak for ourselves, like, you know, there are times like, you know, we, we were in business before we came into ministry. Financially, we were set, everything was good. But but there was a, there shouldn't, you know, for us, there was a, a, a sacrifice that we gave to where, okay, we can't live the lifestyle that we once lived because we're about to give our whole savings into this church. We're about to give everything we have into this church and we might be starting over again, and which we did. But that was way more valuable to me mm-hmm. for you to be a spiritual leader of our house, to hear what God was saying, to say yes to God. If you say yes to God, I'm there for you. I don't care if we go back to a one bedroom apartment. I I mean, I care, but I know we won't be there forever. And I would rather you lead me spiritually, right, and follow God. Uh, it, it, spiritual leadership is everything. Um, there was a time where our marriage was headed for divorce. I mean, I had a whole plan to divorce her. Um, we didn't talk very much. I was interested in other women. I mean, just a long time ago, things wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that the thing that really changed our marriage is that I fell in love with oh, Jesus. Absolutely. And I submitted to his will more than my will. And I just believe that as a husband, I'm not just going to let you be the spiritual leader Mm -hmm. of the home and you're the one praying for the kids and you're the one prophesying over the kids. I want to take the reins of that responsibility. So a lot of men, they try to delegate parenting and they'd be like, well, you take care of the kids and I'm going to take care of this. Mm -hmm. To me as a leader, the responsibility still falls on me. Mm -hmm. My delegation still is saying, okay, you take care of this with the kids, but at the end of the day, I still need to speak into it. Yeah. It's like a CEO. It's like a head coach. Like I got assistant coaches and you're working with the quarterbacks right now and you're working with the defense, but if we lose, everybody coming for my head because I'm the head coach. And so even though you're taking care of the kids, I still have to parent my kids as a dad. Mm-hmm. I still have mm-hmm. to speak into their life. I still need to be able to. So when it comes to the spiritual tone of the home, we need more men that pray. We need more men that tithe. We need more men that live holy. We need more men that read the Bible. Come on. We need more men that call a fast in the home. We need more men that memorize scripture. We need more men that are watching TV. You know how those horror commercials come on. I, give me the controller. We're not watching that. You're not sowing that, sowing that horror yes. crap into my eight-year-old while we're sitting here watching the game. We need more men that are taking the authority over their spiritual home, creating a, a climate to show um, our sons and daughters what being a man of God is we need more men of God again and I believe that you're hearing this because maybe God's just calling you to step up so the greatest advice that I could give you as a husband is to love God more than you love your spouse and God will help you love your spouse appropriately amen but we're out of time for the day I hope that you enjoy today did you enjoy today was today good for you um I feel led to pray. If you're married and you're here with your spouse, um, could you stand up real quick? I want to pray over you. If you're married and you're here with your spouse. Um, I realize in a group this big that there are some of you all who your marriage is, it's rocky, but you're in the right place today. If you can go home and apply some of these things, you're going to see it get better. But if you don't mind, if you could just grab hands. We're just going to prophesy and declare some things over you very quickly. Everybody else just kind of stretch your hands towards them because some of you all are in a battle right now and we want to declare the victory of God over you. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus, we curse divorce over you and separation and the spirit of division that has been attacking your your home. And we declare that every plan and plot of the wicked one against you and your marriage is underneath your feet in the name of the Lord Jesus. We declare that you're blessed, that your children are blessed, that your grandchildren are blessed. We pray for those who've had a hard time having children. We declare the fruit of the womb is yours, that there is an anointing for you to to multiply is over you right now. So we pray. Can you just pray as well, sweetheart? Pray for the wives that God's given you a virtuous heart and a kind heart. Then I'll pray for the husbands. 
Yes, Lord, we lift up every wife in this place today. And we thank you, Lord, that even right now you are stirring in her heart ways that she can be better, ways that she can forgive, ways that she can let go of bitterness, anger, resentment, hurt, ways that she can better herself to overcome the past, to be more like Jesus. And as she does this, that she will become a better wife, that she will be in tune to the needs of her husband. Lord, I pray that you will make her sensitive to the needs of her husband, that she'll be able to hear in the inflection of the tone of his voice what he needs and what he doesn't need. That spiritually, as she prays for him, she will be able to discern what mood he's in. She will be able to discern what his needs are for the day. And I pray, Lord, that kindness is the law of her tongue, that she will open her mouth with prophecies, that she will open her mouth with good things toward her husband, that she will build him up all the days of her life, that she will declare um, the goodness of God and the word of God over his life, and she will be a companion to him, she will be a helpmeet to him, and she will reign and rule in the earth with him, in Jesus' name. And God, we just thank you for every husband that's here, for those husbands who have not had an example of a strong marriage and a strong man. I pray, God, that you will show them things that they have not experienced before and cause them to be the first of their generation to be able to lead their homes in a successful way. I pray for men who've been lazy and slothful in their relationship and they haven't been affectionate towards their good thing. I pray that you change his perspective now. As a high priest of the home, I pray that he be the man of God for the heart of the ruler is in your hands like streams of water and you turn it towards what direction you want it to go. I pray that you are turning the hearts and minds of men towards you first. And I pray, God, as men recommit their life to you today, as they submit to your perfect will, that you will begin to flood their souls with new revelation, a new compassion, a new ability to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And so, God, I just pray for strong men. I pray for mighty men of valor, men who are filled with passion, men who are faithful men, committed men, men who believe in monogamy, men who have broken every generational curse of variety and, 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 and all these different things. I, I come against pornography and every spirit of lust and perversion that has tried to attach itself to you. And we declare who the sun sets free is free indeed. We call your marriage is blessed, healed, whole, prosperous, and promoted from this day forward. You'll be an example to other people of what marriage of God's way shall be. In Jesus' matchless name, somebody say amen. 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 And so East Campus, we love you guys. I'm going to have Pastor Freeman, if you could come on back to the stage, your campus pastor there, and go ahead and give an appeal and let people um, uh, put their faith in Jesus if they so desire. We love you guys. All right. Hey, guys, um, we want to give you that same opportunity here. Um, so can we pray for you very quickly? I want to make sure that you're right with Jesus. I believe there's some of you all here that it's time for you to give your heart to the Lord. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, you don't have to be perfect to be forgiven, but you do have to surrender. And so if you're humble enough to admit that you've ever sinned, you know, the Bible says that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So we all need a savior. And you being a good person, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't pay the price of your sin. You being a, just a great person, you have to receive Jesus. Jesus was the Lamb of God. He was beaten. He was broken. Why? He was punished so that you don't have to be. And all you have to do is humble yourself and surrender and say, God, I believe in you. And so on the count of three, if you would like for me to pray for you so that you can start a relationship with Jesus, I would love to do that all over the building. If that's you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, on the count of three, lift up your hand and just wave at me and say, Pastor, pray for me. On the count of three, lift up your hand. One, two, three. Lift up your hand all over the building and say, Pastor, pray for me. Thank you. I see your hand. 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 Nobody prays alone. Let's pray this together. This is a prayer of surrender. And say, Lord Jesus. Come on, everybody. Say, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I give you me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on a cross so that I could live. I now make you the Lord of my life, the Savior of my soul. You're my God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Amen. God bless you guys.